Hello, welcome to Minslope Academy. In this video, we are diving into the Kali Linux distribution system. It's an operation system designed for penetration testing and ethical hacking. In this 10 minute uh, crash course, we will cover some basics of Kali Linux and some of the essential features. First off, we'll dive over to the terminal. In any Linux distribution system, the terminal is key. So here we'll just look at a few uh, basic commands. So for example, we have the pwd, which will print the current working directory. From here, we can use the cd to navigate back and forth. cd dot dot get, turns us back in one folder. So if I do this now, I'm now in the home folder. And again, I can dive back into the Kali folder. I can use ls to see if there are some files. Here, I see that I have the desktop document root, etc. These are all uh, folders. Then I can do ls slash la to get some more additional information. This will also show all the hidden files along with the uh, access rights. So whether I have read, write or execution rights on the file, when they are created, the size, etc. Then we have the apt uh, get, which is used uh, to install and update software. So basically the package manager, if something is missing or something needs to be updated. Then we also have the sudo which will uh, execute this command with admin privileges. So also a very key uh, word to, to know uh, when using the, the terminal in any Linux distribution system. So this was short about the terminal. Uh, you can read much more about some uh, basic uh, keys uh, either on Google or here on the channel, but this is what we'll cover for now. Next off, we have some of the applications and that's where Kali Linux really uh, makes you efficient in penetration testing and ethical hacking because, as you see, in all applications, it has so many uh, applications installed, pre-installed when you get the distribution system. They are also nicely uh, categorized within different areas, so the different stages, for example, uh, of doing penetration testing. For example, the first one is Wireshark. That is a very popular application. We'll just use the root code here. Wireshark let you uh, capture uh, traffic on any network card. Right now, this is in a virtual box, so this is not uh, attached uh, to do so. But basically, you will see where there is traffic of any of your network cards, be able to uh, capture the traffic. This can also be done from a, a wireless card in capture mode. But you'll be able to capture any package going back and forth the, uh, the network that you're on, and then analyze them. Uh, either for exploitation or to discover if there is an issue uh, in the traffic going back and forth any device on the network. Then we have the uh, Nmap, which is also a tool used for reconnaissance. The Nmap is compared to the Wireshark we just saw, not based on a GUI, but this is uh, directly from the terminal. Here we have some uh, basic commands here. Again, we'll just cover the basics. So for example, Nmap, and then we can say scanme.nmap.org. That's their own page that can be used for testing. So we'll say ports 10. What this command will do is scan this particular website for the top 10 ports defined in the Nmap default settings. So we have the ports here from 21 to 3389. It's under TCP. Then we have the state of the port and what service is most likely running on it. So here we have port 80 that is open. That's basically a basic HTTP. Then we have, uh, for example, the SSH that is also open on the port 22. But basically, Nmap will allow you to uh, scan and do a reconnaissance work on a domain for open ports, what operation system are running, and a lot of other uh, nice to know uh, information about a given uh, domain or server. Uh, before you start to dive further into actually exploiting something on the server or crafting your uh, exploit uh, toolkit. If you want to go into, for example, password hacking or brute forcing, there is a tool called Hydra that is also available. Again, this is based on the terminal. You have some basic information here about what it can do, etc. commands. But as you see, there is and some examples of how to use it. So basically, you type Hydra and then you say, uh, the user uh, that you want to try. So here you can either define a user word, so the username is user, or you can input uh, a list that you want to uh, to uh, run uh, through, loop through, so to say. So a user list, or you can use, for example, a password list. And then you can define, uh, for example, here, a FTP uh, server, so on this domain, this is just the local one, but if you had a FTP server, you could try to brute force it <coughs> using a user list and a password list to try all possible combinations that is on these two lists to get access to that. So that's a 
nice and efficient tool to use for brute forcing or other password cracking. However, be aware that when you use such a tool, you will probably quickly get caught uh, either by intrusion detection systems or in the firewall because you are trying uh, so many combinations uh, at once. So be aware of where you use this. And of course, everything that is in Kali Linux is only to be used for ethical purposes. So either pen testing uh, because you have been hired to do so or in order to test your own security on your own services. Uh, etc. The last tool I will quickly show you that it's also in installed is Burp Sweep, uh, which is also a very popular and comprehensive tool used for uh, uh, identifying and exploiting uh, vulnerabilities in web applications. So each of these tools that I have showed you, of course, need their own separate introduction. I just want to show you that basically Kalinus has all uh, the key stuff that you need, and it's just up to you to. Uh, navigate around, experience, try to open some of these and play around with them and learn them one by one in order uh, for you to, to get familiarized with them. Uh, and then there's only one thing back left to, to cover here. It's also, of course, how to get this running. How do you get Kali Linux? Basically, as you have probably seen, I'm running Kali Linux here on a virtual machine. So using VirtualBox, you can get it uh, for free by going to Kali.org, click under the download. On the download, you can either uh, get a raw image that you can run uh, from a, a PC similar to your own operation system, but you can also uh, get uh, virtual machines, which is what I'm using. So here there are different uh, versions of Kali Linux uh, made up for virtual machines. We have for VMware, uh, VirtualBox, Hybo uh, V. Then you basically just download this and open it directly in any of these applications and then it's already pre-configured what settings should be uh, on the virtual machine and basically it's ready to, to boot up uh, from scratch and this, this will also have the beneficial uh, ability of being contained within a virtual box so you are not running all these applications and all this stuff on your real operation system in case you mess something up or you uh, try out some uh, attack approaches that might damage your system overall, then it's nice to have it configured in a virtual machine so you can just get rid of that one and get a fresh installation if you mess something up. This basically concludes our quick 10 minute basics of Kali Linux. This is an operation system that requires a lot more in order to, uh, to learn fully, but I hope that you at least got something useful out of this and are now ready to try uh, and play a bit around with it on your own. See you next time here on Vinchlove Academy.